Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Get Jashed. Today I'm excited to have Joel Murray joining me. So Joel is a professional speaker, MC, announcer, host and presenter who has done I think well over uh, 250 events in the 11 years that he's been doing this work. Um, some but definitely not all of the events and most of these are recent include Run Army which is how we actually met, uh, the Beer Mile, Bribey Triathlon, the Harvey Bay 100, that's my hometown, just a fun fact there, uh, the Sydney Marathon and many, many more. So I appreciate you joining me, Joel. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me, Jess. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, so I wanted you, I, I, I wanted, I invited you onto the podcast because um, as we know, like the general topics that we cover are around leadership, communication, well-being, all of that. And I know you're very into taking care of yourself. You run a lot. So it's sort of, I don't know if it's by design or accident that you landed in work that lands you at all of these different kinds of running events as well. Um, but with public speaking, it's generally something that tends to make people a lot like very sweaty I enjoy it if I know what I'm like there for, you know, but um, I know the majority of people actively hate it. So <laughs> what led you to this work? Because I, I think it's the kind of work that you kind of, like I would imagine that you kind of get to on purpose, but in some way. So what, what led you to what you do? Yeah. So for me, I started out as a, a primary school teacher. So talking to um, early years kids was, was my my job and then I was also shared time as a PE teacher as well and in that mm. time and I was a coach and one of the things was when I was doing prac as a like at university and I realized I am so nervous about talking in front of the kids mm. and in particular I was so nervous when I had to speak in front of my peers whenever I was getting judged or graded on something I would sweat I'd clam up I'd be shaky I'd want to go on bath like mm -hmm. it. It's Very not, familiar, yes. Yeah, not fun. <laughs> so I always, like I, I loved drama because drama was a character and people mm -hmm. were sort of judging the character that were, and the performance. It wasn't so much me as a person. Um, so one of the things I did when I was at university is I discovered the world of karaoke and I'm not a singer. I'm pretty bad at it. Oh. But I discovered that it, drinks were really cheap on a Tuesday night at the Pado. Um, tavern so that was pretty cool that was a good way to meet my mates so it was uh -huh. a good way to pretend that I was in like a doctor or something to try and pick up girls which didn't ever work for me but <laughs> I tried um, I think one of my old lines was I was telling my kids about it yesterday I was it was that I was in the Australian lawn bowls team that one definitely didn't work used it no, a lot it no. never, got, <laughs> never got me anywhere but um, I realized that everyone thought I was so drunk to be up there singing that I ended up doing it sober quite a few times and being the designated driver. So that was my introduction to the microphone and being a bit of a deal, loved attention always as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, so that was primarily the start. And then you start teaching. Uh, and in my coaching days, I had to, or where it was, was at a criterion where there was a grandstand there. So all the parents would sit in the grandstand and they would watch every single thing you did with their children and they would judge you on what you're saying. And As by parents the do, session, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the end of a session, I realised that the parents listened to everything. So whatever I was teaching the students or the the athletes, they would then the parents were sort of like, oh, Joel said to do this. and You're teaching the spot. parents, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also about having fun was always my biggest part so it was while educating it's also performing um yeah but through that I, Iron Man ended up having a race in Cairns I snapped my collarbone that year so I wasn't able oh. to participate um so I ended up getting a gig uh as a commentator and announcer at the bike turnaround which was in Port Douglas in front of the pub so there was an mm. Irish pub on one side of the street perfect and there was a, the big <laughs> pub that you see in the fool's gold on the other side of the street sort of halfway down the main street mm -hmm. um board if you've ever been there and I had a big tv screen um on the back of a truck I had people that were sitting eating and drinking all day they were my audience and then I had the triathletes in front of me which was my my my, my passion and my hobby was keeping fit yeah swimming cycling running like I love triathlon mm -hmm. 
Um, and seeing it in the local area up there in a region was just something pretty cool. So I was left alone though. So I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to talk into a microphone. I didn't know how a microphone worked. And for six hours, I just told stories and cheered on athletes and sort of yeah, did my thing. So I did that, I think, for three years. I only had one event a year for three years. Um, and I sort of started refining my craft. And then mm. I got invited down to Noosa to do the Winter Festival. And you're working with Dr. Chris Brown was there and you oh, have Michael right. there and like all these professional speak like like yes not yeah. that you're not a professional Joel, oh i was like, a professional but, at that day. <laughs> but Very like people trained like media yeah. trained yeah wow yeah, so full media trained guys and i was just a little primary school teacher at that stage <laughs> i and, and the thing was i'd always ask people for feedback and the only feedback mm. you ever get from someone in that industry is oh you sound good oh yeah thanks guys and i was like that's not <laughs> Um, and when I did ask an, another guy, he was the sound guy and he's like, oh, how did I go today? And he goes, oh, you should tell stories and you should talk about how much these things cost and you should do this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I just did that for six hours. Like I did tell stories. What do you want? I did say <laughs> all that. And he was praising the, my co-commentator that day who didn't do any of that. So oh, I was like, so we did were he actually get paying attention up? to me. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, and then I learned that the only feedback you get in industry is whether they book you again. Mm. Um, and that I have not been on a celebrity show. I haven't been on maths. So I haven't been on Bondi Rescue or any of those reality TV shows. So for me, it was always going to be a little bit harder uh-huh. because events try to leverage off yeah. as a little celebrity person. But when you do that, the focus is on that person being there the mm. focus is not on the participants so I've always had it that like I'm, I'm an athlete I was injured so I couldn't do it I'm not a great athlete I was a hack athlete um, just an age group of pace fees I want to have a great experience but I want to feel like a rock star when I'm on course I want to yeah of course I want to feel some excitement. so that's my whole philosophy is to treat every athlete how I would love to be treated if I was out there mm. so I sort of hang in the shadows is my technique um, I always place myself away from where people can access me and have a conversation because if someone's having a conversation with me, that means I'm missing John who's crossing the line right now, who could be 55. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's trained for 12 months just to do this first event. So it's like, no, he's my, he's why I'm here. I um, did notice that about you. Um, yes, I <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, where's Joel gone? Because yeah. you were like, for me at, like those events you're the the not the no voice of god friendly but you were you were <laughs> you were the friendly face that I felt like I could go up to yeah because like I think you know like because I could see everyone else going up to all of the other people at the yeah. like at that event I was like okay but I need to know like where I'm meant to go like for the um for the stuff that I was there doing for, yeah. the, for the event so I was like okay well where's Joel like he like I could like he'll tell me and I'm like where is he yeah. <laughs> So that's like, something I do because like I'm employed um, and that, that's it. I'm a service provider, just like mm. every other person, every other contractor there. I'm not there as a celebrity. I'm yeah. there to provide the service of being the party starter to get the vibe happening, to get the key mm. messages across, to get the stakeholders to have ensured that everyone knows about their products that they um, got on site and also to ensure the safety of all the athletes. And then yeah. the last part's the party part. So yeah. That that's my job, and that's a lot of a lot of data stuff going on. There's a lot of that I'm paying attention to, reading body language, mm. reading the vibe. Oh yeah, there's a lot of energy. So that goes when you into get caught up in conversation, which a lot of MCs tend to, and I've seen it, it's it's the worst habit. You miss it all, mm. and then I, I pull away for two minutes, and you'll be catching up for ten minutes trying to work out what's yeah. who's who's what? where. Has such yeah. and such finished? What's the story out there? How many athletes are left? So, but yeah, so I got this extra event at Noosa and then that turned into Bribe Try. And then in 2016, I did the Gold Coast Marathon for the first oh, time. Yeah. And I was packing it. So in the triathlon world, you have about 1,500 athletes, maybe 3,000 mm. if they have the biggest events. Uh, Noosa Try gets about 6,000 athletes on it. I know they always say there's 10, 13,000, but uh, yeah numbers there's only six thousand <laughs> bikes there so 
Uh -huh. um, that's sort of what's there. So that's when you compare that to 26,000 at the Gold Coast Marathon, mm. it's like, wow, this is it. So I had the job on the start line, which is really hard to get a crowd engagement on the start line. Everyone's nervous in Australia. We all have our phones up. And when we have our phones up, no one wants to cheer. So we wow. have the quietest crowds, I reckon, in the world. Really? That's um, yeah, stadiums are different, but in a stadium, you're seated for 15 mm. for two hours and you're engaged in the atmosphere and trying to cheer your players on, but mm. you're already you're there knowing that you're going to cheer. When it's 6 a.m. in the morning and you're at a running event or at a swim, you're still waking you're up. You're not wanting to cheer <laughs> at 6 a.m. in the morning. You've got up at 3 a.m., you're tired, mm. you want a coffee, mm. and this guy's yelling at you to clap your hands and you're going, <laughs> no, I'm not happy if you know it. Like, it's, I'm not clapping. <laughs> so, um, but that was a big eye opener. And, and even there, like, you, I just always listen to people's films. So everyone would post their Instagram and you'd hear my mm. voice in the background or there's a live stream. You go, oh, yeah. So any anything I say could be taken out of context. So you yeah. always have to think mm. about every single word. So that was sort of my biggest feedback is listening to yourself, um, trying to be be the character. So Joel the MC, I, mm. but I change my voice slightly when I'm on the microphone um, to when I'm talking to my friends. So that's my character. So you're not judging Joel. You don't know Joel, but yeah. you're judging the guy who's talking on the microphone. Um, mm. Uh, and yeah, and then at the finish line and you're calling Kenyans across the line and learning about how to interview people for live streams and, and everything. So everything I've done has been learnt through events. Yeah. And then in 2018, I got the gig as the voice for the Queen's Baton Relay, which travelled the whole of Australia. So I had 75 days of every day working on the microphone. Wow. And there's 3,800 baton bearers around the country uh, 12 concerts that I had to MC, and I had to sort of talk about the people as I was moving backwards in a van. Um, uh -huh. I chewed the tooth from hitting the speed bump in the van and sort of ate the microphone. I oh, sort of no. still carry it. So I got a wonky smile and I still carry it with a bit of pride. It's like, yeah, that's that's got a story. Yeah. Um, but that that experience in itself, seeing the whole country and anywhere you went around the country, I knew someone, whether it would be in Alice Springs. I ended up working with someone um, from that in my current job. There was teacher aides I'd worked with in Cairns who were working in the um, Western Australia in, and also in the NT. There was teachers all over Queensland that wow. I'd worked with. Um, athletes that I knew through the Ironman stuff as well were all around the country. So you sort of go, wow, this is pretty cool. So I had this amazing side um, job, which um, still is a side job to me. It's not my real Every Monday to Friday job where mm. I travel Australia just spruiking sports events but basically um and then it grew from 10 events a year after Com Games it went to 40 events I announced the marathon so mm. Kurt Fernley's last ever international event I was the guy calling him up to the dais which is wow. on all the, all the footage uh and the race walks we had Dane Bird Smith take gold Jemima Tui won the gold for the ladies as well so um it was really cool but I, I don't announce just triathlon. It's triathlon running. I do some gymnastics now, ocean paddling, swimming, yeah. um, air climbs. So I do as much as I can. And, and the reason for it is it's trying to elevate whatever event it is to mm. get the energy to get everyone going, oh, okay, what's going on? Um, yeah. People go, how, much, how do you know about that? And the biggest thing is asking someone who's an expert. Mm. So um, I was working at the launch for the Gold Coast Indoor Centre mm. um, 2017, just before the 2018. And I was having to do an exhibition day and they had judo and I knew nothing about judo. <laughs> so I just stood next to the guy who knew everything about judo from the Com Games and was just I'd say, he'd go oh it's a take it's a one-legged takedown and I go oh it's a one-legged takedown and then he's moved into so just echoing what he was saying but through the yeah. mic well I would say it and I had the guy Volcom from Gladiators he's a he's a huge man with a big deep voice oh he came up. this is like sense memories that you yeah, bring yeah. back okay yeah he came <laughs> up to me he goes 
so you know your way around the mats. And I was like, no, I don't. I just listen to this guy. <laughs> but I've used that technique now across swimming, like the, you know, I'm sitting with Olympians doing mm. um, as my co-anchors in track and field, I'll have an Olympian. So I never go as the expert. I always let the experts who have done it be the expert, like at the Sunshine Coast half marathon the national champs this year i worked with benita willis who's the goat of australian running and mm. said all right benita you're the expert and i just throw it all to her with the question <laughs> and then come back um so I, I i guess that's the biggest thing is don't act like you know something you don't know about mm. stay in your comfort zone stay with what you know um you talked about how you're confident when you rock up to events when you know what's going on well, it's, I've yeah. done that at events now that I don't know what's going on. Mm. So even Sydney Marathon, which I worked on this year, so that was 42,000 people, had an international field. I got rung up on the Tuesday and then I was flown down on the Saturday. And then <laughs> on the Sunday, I didn't know where I was working exactly. I went Excellent. to the start line, did my thing there, <laughs> didn't know what was going on, hadn't seen a map, hadn't been there before. Um, but you just go with it. You go with mm. your comfort. And then ended up, they didn't have a mic elsewhere on the course so I did my little prezos and then I ended up on the finish line and called across the winners and was one of the lead voices with the team there on the the finish line so you just default to prior experiences yeah everything's well, pretty similar but I had no idea what was going on um, that's like you that's the it. signage for the sponsors and segue yeah. into you can yeah well you mentioned there's two things you mentioned as in terms of how you got started one is you said that you were a primary school teacher and yeah and I've always said like I've always not always but I've always sort of thought or felt um because I I do work presenting to defense but I also occasionally present to school kids and I feel the same about both in the opposite direction in the sense of when I'm presenting to school kids, I'm like, oh God, if I can present to soldiers, then of course I can talk to school kids. Like, you know, I've got this, like, it, you know, just that yeah. confidence building, but it's also the other way around. It's like, if I can present to kids, then of course I can present to sh soldiers, right? Like they're very different like groups, obviously, but it's just like, they're almost at the opposite extremes of the spectrum that I'm like, yeah, well, if I can do one, then I can do the other. And it's just that little confidence boost, but yeah. You mentioned wearing hats and I like um, this is how I sort of work with clients in their confidence, but it's also because I've recognized that that's how I've done it myself yep. is I love being on stage. Like I'm a, um, like I, I like performing and I've done, th I was a theater kid, you know, so like dance and theater and all of that, but I, I like presenting. I like being on stage. So that's when I teach yoga or when I'm teaching um, or training I put that hat on and that's what yep. makes it okay. And I like that you sort of said um, they're judging Joel, the MC, not Joel, the person. It is like that. And it's, it's a, it's a protective mechanism, but not in a bad way. It's this, it's this sort of recognition, I think for confidence purposes that if you're going to be judged, it's not you personally, it's just, you, you know, like that, that work or that job that you did and then that's okay because you can build on that or you can adjust or you can change that or whatever it is but it then doesn't undermine who you are as a person no and that's probably the biggest thing that especially in the early days I probably clung to it a lot that mm. that character and I really did change my voice and I had big <laughs> chance and sounded very radio everyone's like, oh what radio station are you on I'm like, oh, radio I'm not I'm just <laughs> I'm not yeah. I'm just, I'm just a hack guys mm. um but it's a it's definitely an it's an art and it's at the end of the day it comes down to reading people so uh, you know through your presenting you are constantly reading the crowd to see that they have taken on board what you've said and constantly I always reading the room yes yeah. constantly reading the room and, and I do that through telling a story and then I'm also like a I'm a dad, so dad humour comes yeah, out, relatable humour. Yeah. And if it's a running event, there's all these little weird, intricate things that runners always do. And then when you see it happen, you just call it out. Yeah. Um, and, and you're calling the moment and the people in the stands will have a little giggle and they're, okay, yeah. they're with me, they're with me. So then it's all about winning the crowd over because ultimately you want the biggest cheer for the finisher in the shoot. So it's not about calling 
the finisher's name to be a good MC. It's not just about that. Like everyone mm. can say, everyone, like I say, I'm Siri. I say your name a little bit different because I don't know you. And most names aren't phonetically spelt. So yeah. it's, <laughs> I'll have a crack at it. I'll sound confident, and, but I don't know if I'm right. Mm. Um, but it's, if I can get you a big cheer, because often they don't hear the name, but they'll hear the atmosphere. And that's that sticking point. That, that's the hook to get them back on another yeah. start get to another finish line so it's like okay how do we make it a party but you tr- you're constantly just trying to win the crowd over and hold them for as long as possible because yeah. they are a revolving door like it's well that's it it's a like new crowd but i think um what and this links back to what you were saying before as well as like as an mc you do it in a very selfless way which i think is is doing the job even better right like because you're doing it in a selfless way where it's not actually about you you're making it about the people that are showing up you're making it about the crowd Mm -hmm. about the athletes like you know about the people doing that work and it's very selfless and I say the word selfless because like we can all think of you know whether they're in the public eye or our own life like you know people that want to be the MC just because they want to be the center of attention not and, me. <laughs> yeah. And you're I, like, no, like this is, I'm, my job is to make, like to just kind of be the conduit for other people to be that, that have that attention on them or, or feel that thing. Yeah. Or, and I think that's a really powerful skill to have in general, mm-hmm. um, but also in what you do, because then it makes people want to be part of it. Like as the crowd, like, it makes them want to be involved rather than just sitting around and being like, oh, okay, well, like, when's this going to be over kind of feel? They're yeah. like, oh, this is like, this is a vibe. It's- yeah. yeah. Um, and like Run Army, like it's mm. Mark Barrett is there from yeah. Sunrise. Every lady over 40 loves Mark. Like he's, he's a pin-up boy. <laughs> like a, of a course. <laughs> Poster and, on their wall. And- yeah, yeah. Everyone wants to selfie with Mark. So he, he, like he's a star. He's, mm. he's the ambassador. And yeah. I'm the voice to keep keep it moving, and then yeah. to talk it up for him, and and to keep the energy up. So it's and but that's just my role in it, and that, well, I'm you, happy you, with that role. It's yeah. not trying to compete with Mark, which other people you yeah. hear other commentators, and it becomes I would call it the dick swinging, where mm-hmm. it's old mates here, he's the new kid on the block, and then here's the old guy who's trying to yeah. hold his position and wants to be the voice of whatever, <laughs> and they will yell, and then he yells louder, and he yells louder. Um, and, and I've worked feel- with enough MCs to go, mate, if we bounce off each other, mm. I'll throw to you. You can yell as loud as you want. And then you throw to me and I'll do the stat story thing. Yeah. Because the crowd can then stick around if it's just two guys yelling. It's not fun. You know, yeah. Yelling, it's like, I'm out of here. It's like yeah. going to a shop and they've got the loud rock music on. Mm-hmm. Like you're in there and you're out. You're not hanging around. Yeah. You do a really good, I like that. I, that was a, uh, very noticeable thing at run army that i noticed like the two years that i've been involved and been there for now it's it's two years yeah yeah <laughs> oh, years. that's right yeah. double the numbers it's, oh it's god huge. um but like it was very noticeable the atmosphere and um and i've been to sort of events like that i'm not a runner i i feel like in a in an alternate lifetime, like in an alternate life path, I would have been an athlete, but it wouldn't have been running. It would have been like netball, you know. <laughs> but, but even so, you feel that environment and you feel that atmosphere there. Mm-hmm. And it, and I noticed, and I don't know if it's because, like, well, actually, I I do know it's not just because I was like semi involved, like I was like facilitating yoga for the athletes and everything in some way, but like, um it wasn't just because I was involved. I think as a participant and as a crowd member, it was noticeable for me and for others. Anyway, the vibe was genuinely fun. Mm. It wasn't just, Oh, we're in the hot sun and like, yeah, it's okay. But like, we're kind of just waiting and we're just here. We're just paying it off. You know, like it was genuinely enjoyable in some way. Like, um, and and I think that came down to like the dynamic between everyone that you'd hear from because it wasn't just the Brett show, you know, as as great as he is. It wasn't just like all about him, but it wasn't two people trying to sort of just be no. that person either. Like it was very much um 
it was very it's much about the achievement. It's, it was the team, yeah, and you the felt team. that, yeah. And I think with Run Army in particular, it was the it's it was got a the great best, story. It's got a great story, but it was the best place to feel that teamwork yeah. because that is, you know, the one of like mateship is one of the core bases of yeah. defense. So you know, it's like you actually felt it there. You're like, oh yeah, everyone's kind of like we're all in it. And you know, I I didn't participate in my first year, but I did uh in 2023 yeah and even just feeling that like you know getting to the finish line and you know I was not one of the uh close like first to finish by any means but it was still this like sense of achievement that you kind of felt collectively celebrated from everyone there even if it wasn't just even if it was everyone cheering everyone going across the line at the same time with you there was this sense yeah it was just this really well done sense of oh like yeah like we're all in like kind of like like high school musical style like we're all in this together like you know like it's all yeah yeah, it's it's very Uh, well done in that way and that one's a that's a really genuine event where and it's, Mm. it's really different from everything else like there's no other event I've worked on a few events in that same setting and had that yeah. finish line right there like Brisbane Marathon was finishing yeah, there right. it, it didn't work in the same way oh um, really so you've got because they have the story of the it's for legacy so that's yeah. the major fundraising and then you've got the volunteer staff of the army personnel which are right around the course yeah. everyone's in black shirts I've never seen an event where everyone adopts to wear the <laughs> shirt like the event shirt like that normally yeah. everyone's in their club shirt still so that's the other thing but it is the story it's about legacy it's about being together it's about mateship and then the band works no other finish line has a band work like that so yeah. in the first year the band was playing and I was like guys you're really good I'm just going to in between each song just keep saying what I need to to keep it moving but mm. I'm going to throw it back up to you guys every time because they were awesome and mm. it, it just showcased how good they were and they had a ball. So then yeah. this year, it's like we were able to use them, them more. They flowed back to me, but it is, it's a production and um, we call it sports presentation. So it's all about sports press. So you will see when I'm thrown to the band, I was always on point on the stage. You could see me throw mm. to the band. You could physically see who was talking. If there's an interview, you can see where the interview is. We always pull that person back out where the crowd can see. Mm. Um, even Gold Coast Marathon, I pull them. Anyone I interview now, it used to happen behind everyone where everyone was vomiting and in blue <laughs> and things, like a war zone. Sounds awful. But yes. now I drag them <laughs> around the blue carpet in front of the grandstand. Yeah. And that is the biggest yeah. round of applause you'll see all day because that's why you sit in the grandstand to see these phenomenal see. athletes. Yeah. And you want to hit see who is talking. Mm-hmm. So um, it's all that presentation. We have the stage there. The sound system was better this year. Uh, but, yeah, no matter how big the event is, we like, we give feedback because we want to improve as a yeah. team. Yeah. And the best events I work on is where we have a team. So Gold Coast is the best finish line. Um, Sydney was up there this year because I work with uh, Tawley, DJ Tawley, and we just work as a team. And it's mm-hmm. no fighting or anything. It's like, no, nah, if we both do it together, you do this, you do this um yeah we just bounce off each other and you, and you have fun it's less energy and yeah. that's you, well, you've got more to give when you do it. To everyone it. is having more fun it's yes. not just some person up on stage like being the only person to have fun because they're really centering themselves it's like yeah. like you said it's the like because you deserve the recognition so it's not it's not about not centering that but it is like the um it is like the that teamwork and that flow so everyone can just get to enjoy what they're doing yes. like and the band would be like and you felt this at run army like as i keep referring yeah, to everyone stayed around because that's right, the one i was right, at right. Yep. yeah like everyone was like everyone stayed around i've yes, never seen that at normal. an event like that no but like everyone lingered even after the presentations it was like oh people are just hanging out like mm. but you know the band is having fun because they feel valued they don't feel like they're just like back up backup singers or dancers or tunes you know like they're actually like they're part oh, of the show we're part of this how fun is yeah. that like yeah everyone's part of it and like the crowd is even part of it and 
yeah it makes a difference to the experience and I imagine that like I mean I don't know if you still feel nervous public speaking nowadays because you've had the practice but I imagine it makes it like you said it's a lot easier on you anyway because it's this it's this this dance between everyone rather than oh I got to fill in six hours of talking because I I'm going to be the center of attention like it's this whole value in how we can lift each other up just by being yep. in our own zone. So I, I, I still get nervous when I got to go up on stage mm. and I get really nervous if I have a script. If yeah, you give me, me too. I hate a script. Yeah. <laughs> dot, if I have dot points and key messages, I can mm-hmm. memorize yep. and, and I can roll with it and mm. segue it in and then I can play off the crowd a little bit. And it's, it's natural. It sounds yeah. natural. Yep. Someone writes me a script. The worst. It is never, ever how I talk. Yeah. It sounds like I'm an English scholar and I am very simple in the words that I use. I don't use a big vocab. Um, and the reason is I want people to understand yeah. what we're saying. So I was like, oh, no, I wouldn't use that word. And I wouldn't, I don't talk like that. Like, mm. why is that full stop there? Like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I, I don't like scripts. Um, yeah, and it's just key times. Like, if you go, Joel, at 6 o'clock, I need you to intro this. Yeah. Because we've got the national anthem, which is going to live stream. So just hit the mark and mm-hmm. I can fill it time with stories and yeah. stuff. And I can go, okay, I got 30 seconds. All right, bounce to you, back to me. All right, let's throw to the national anthem. So it's, yeah, I, I, I love that though. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm always wired in. So with like Gold Coast Marathon on the start line, I have to hear courses clear while I'm talking. And that the police have done all their checks and that everything's fine and safe. Mm. And it's then the live feed guys are going, yeah, we're not ready for you yet to throw to this. So then you're holding <laughs> things up and there, there's a lot going through your ears and communications mm-hmm. that people would have no idea about. Um, like we we had athletes caught in the Portaloo uh, <laughs> Gold Coast this year, but I oh, just no. been caught in the Portaloo. So I was like, oh, I've got to introduce a race. Oh, I've got the top no. five athletes to introduce. So Things like that happen all the time, but the the biggest art of it as a performer, as you, you know, and the public speaker is to be calm. Yeah. So everything is going on around you. Like the like Gold Coast, we had the unfortunate event of the gentleman getting CPR in the shoe. Oh, yeah. So that'll happen and that happened in front of me, but you got to stay calm. You don't want to cause mm. a ruckus. You want the emergency people to be able to do their job, get the sheets up, get privacy for the family. And mm. you continue on trying to avert people's attention elsewhere on course. So it's um, all of that happens. And then you fall apart a couple of days later because you, yeah, because you got to still process it. Performance high. And then you go into that. Yeah. And that's probably part yeah. of like the well being side of it is like it can be a joy and it can be like a rush in the moment. And you're almost too busy to be nervous because yes. <laughs> there's so much going on, it sounds like. But then also um, there is, like from any event, even ones that go really well, there's always going to be like the come down after that you kind yes. of got to just take care of yourself and then go, oh, okay, I'm just going to like, you know, like I've, uh, for me, it's like when I hold retreats or anything like that where I'm just switched on and it's for an extended period as well, I know that two days, like for like a, let's say a three-day retreat, for two days after that, I need just just quiet, gentle, like I, I'm still functioning, but it's like, I know that I'm just going to need time to kind of just integrate. And yep. cause especially like when you're holding space for that long, even if it goes really well. So like for events, for high energy events, there's always going to be like the proverbial bubble bath after that's needed. You yep. know? <laughs> and and um, the, the, the more excitement and the more that you put into the event and the higher, the high, the lower, the low is mm-hmm. off the back. So Sydney Marathon was like a massive high and I reckon it took me three or four days to come down off that. It was just mm. an amazing event. And then there's other events where like I can do the bribe try and it's just a normal day. I'll be going yeah. for a run in the afternoon. It's just like going to work mm. and do your thing. You've done it that many times. You're on autopilot. Yeah. You know, all the contractors really well. You just get in, do your um, thing. But I don't get nervous when I have a mic in my hand. So that's my persona straight away. Like if mm. I can pick up a mic, I'd say grip it and rip it. Yeah. Um, I don't get nervous, but if it's stage with a lectin or something, I can't grip. 
that's yeah. when I get I get they're always really it's awkward like, oh, no. for me. Yeah. yeah it's like how close do I go like, yeah and like do, do, I, do I look like a goose now yeah. like, what's I just going want on? to be able to walk what do around? I do with my hands mm, <laughs> for me um uh yeah holding a mic is fine if I don't need to hold it so whether it's in an environment that I can project or if I this isn't been as often but if I'm wearing like a headset that will work that's for me because I talk with my hands so I'm like my yep. hands are free to gesticulate and you know to express for me then that's sort of like regulating my energy as I go anyway because I'm moving it's not like I'm like I think the lectern you kind of you're stuck at so you can't kind of do the little self-regulating things along the way yep. like this is just me sort of thinking that way like for you it's like oh yeah holding the microphone so there's that somatic sort of like that that calms me because there's something to hold and then there's the other hand to sort of gesture with or but the lectern you're like oh I have to stay still hmm. like that just it's makes my shoulders to, creep up immediately I'm like <laughs> it's hard to perform um, yeah you can't it's hard to easily because it's the biggest thing is you want to engage people. So mm. the voice can do so much, but body language again is yeah. the other part. Uh, and facial expressions, like I'm very animated in mm. the way the book. Um, at events though, I have the big sunnies on and the hats on and mm-hmm. it's pretty much like you, you can't see. The voice will do all the work. Yeah, but also that's very part different. of your character. character like yeah. it's always people like... People um, recognise the sunnies more than they yeah, recognise... Yeah, it's the sunnies. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Where's like he's wearing the sunnies? Where is where are the yeah. sunnies? And you're looking for that if if like you're looking for you. So it um I think it's sort of it's like that that hat kind of thing, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh it's it's your it's my piece of costume. Yeah. Yeah, it's your costume. It's like here I am. This is what it is. Like I always like call active wear my uniform now because it's like, well, I'm most comfortable in it because I've presented the most times in that, like in in some form or another, even if I'm just standing up in front of people talking with them, it's yeah. still like presenting. I'm like, it's still my uniform. It just is what it is. So like when I put that on, I'm like, oh, I'm just more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. And I guess like moving into um, now, because I'm sort of into that, I'm moving into the 12th year and mm. sort of moving more towards 300 events. So over that time and yeah. The, the events are getting bigger and I'm working on a lot of live streams now. So it is no hiding behind mm. It's like you've got a headset on, which is like, what do I do with these things? And plus <laughs> I've got a, a lens on my face. Yeah. So I, I al- always think about how you present yourself in the way you dress as well is the other part, because no matter what event I'm working on, there'll be a photographer and oh, I'll yeah. be framed. So it's mm-hmm. always trying to look as neat as possible. I always get a haircut before my events. <laughs> like that's one thing whereas I see other MCs and they're on the finish line and then a lot of them will put themselves in the finished shoot so they're in Mm. the domain of the athlete like I try to stay out of that area as much as possible um because that's the athlete's stage as they finish like that's their space so yeah they put them in there so that means that they're in every photo and they've got the shirt untucked and the beer belly (laughs) and the hair's all scruffy. I was like, that is not what I want in my shot. Buy a brush. I've been trained <laughs> for six months to get myself a physical peak. I want a photo mm. of me. I want a clean shot. Yeah. Of me, not some other guy in the back trying to take every shot. So, yeah, always being presentable. Like, I'm, yeah, it invested a lot of money over the last 12 months in some very expensive shirts, which are... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh that's a nice shirt. It's like, yeah, it cost me a fortune. Yeah, but if it... <laughs> I mean, Maya now. <laughs> and I think, but that's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's it. And I think, like, for anyone listening, if they're taking anything away from, like, you know, building confidence in public speaking, it doesn't have to be emceeing events, but it could be, you know, presenting at work or whatever it is. Like, it's it's doing the things that kind of... I always start with putting like putting yourself into the character, but the character still yes. has to be you. It still has to be rooted in you. It's not a facade. It's not a no. falseness. It's so it's sort of very different to a mask. It's just a hat that goes on top, like so to speak. Yes. And you still get to be you, but it's it's doing things that make you feel more comfortable, but then also recognizing that you can only do so much to be comfortable. And sometimes you then have to just just start like you know just kind yeah. of like, um, I always say figure out the first thing you're going to say and then just go from there because sometimes we get stuck on I don't know how to start and go okay if you just start with 
whatever it is relevant to whatever you're saying or presenting or whatever, then the rest can then have permission to come in. But you kind of, you kind of got to step yourself over that starting line. You know, it's a, it's the first sentence is probably the most nerve wracking one. So if I have a new person co-presenting with me, I'm like, okay, uh, they're always hesitant to do the first sentence, especially if I start talking on the mic before them, because I'll go Mm. straight into it. Yeah. very polished and they're like oh no like what what am I doing like this is mm. crazy and I was like just just do your first sentence like, just get it out and when I'm interviewing young athletes or adults are probably a little bit more nervous yeah it's like it's just a conversation between you and me just look at me mm. and then once you're confident with that then we can look out at the crowd but yeah. I'm going to be looking at you to see how you're taking the questions and then because my uh, the way I interview people now it's not just straight three questions Mm. it's normally you ask them the initial question and then you gauge off them okay that was interesting tell me more yeah but as a fan I want to know more about that (laughs) yeah Um, so like I'll be interviewing Susie O'Neill or Kate Campbell or someone and you're like oh I want to know about this what do you do Yeah. (laughs) yeah yeah And relatable things to us like oh so when you're doing freestyle how do you grab the water and kate mm. campbell taught like said oh she puts her arm right in the water like all the way in it doesn't bend it or anything yeah and i was like oh, i've never done that and then i went and tried at the pool and i was like oh this actually works for me really well yeah like, it's gonna be a bit stronger but it's actually okay like it's mm. i can see the propulsion now and you ask little things like that and you learn it's a lot and then yeah. you take it away and that's what people listening want they don't just want oh how was your race yeah like, how are you feeling how was the crowd like Who do you want to thank? <laughs> i still say those ones when they're not um yeah confident because mm. you, you see the the lip shake and you go, okay oh. this person's struggling today i'm just gonna ask the, the basic yeah and that's thank? like and that's and then, all yeah, right you gotta thank mm. mum and dad the number one sponsors like yeah. they've been there um and then when you're interviewing someone for the first time like a a, a child or someone who's not strong in English what Mm. was your favorite part yeah because they're the expert it's their experience there's no right or wrong exactly that builds their confidence up and then you can ask more pointed questions but always kicking off what was your favorite part if it's a English as a second language when you Mm. ask a question you give them the answer and then they just repeat the answer back to you yeah English but you actually ask the question with the answer involved it it would give them the confidence to start that like to engage in that conversation because they're like oh yeah no that is that is yep that's how I say it cool I'll answer that and And then they they often keep going yeah hearing Mm. themselves as you know from presenting as well the the most scary part is when you speak into the microphone and there's a two second delay yeah your voice (laughs) come back into your ears and that is the most daunting part so Mm. say your first sentence like get used to what you're going to hear of yourself mm. um and then you can sort of get into it you, you're all in your internal head yeah mind. it's kind of like you got to get into tunnel vision enough to yes which is really like, hard have the conversation yeah because yeah. lots is always going on there's over stimulus mm. and, and so yeah it's always oh far out for what, me i find and that's I why find... i step away from people it's like yeah okay. I'm yeah bring them to the side I'm, like, I on always... the data. I'm focused on the timing schedule I'm focused on the <laughs> yeah because yeah, I find I find the overstimulus like it's almost a relief to go into the the tunnel vision like oh cool mm. I'm just gonna be here for a moment and it's hard to do sometimes so it's helpful to have someone who is like aware of that or skilled at that to bring you into that like the way that you say you do is like oh yeah just bring them in here Mm -hmm. but it's such a relief and I think if the more people like when they start to learn that then they're like oh cool I can do that because otherwise they're like no I have to pay attention to everything it's like no no you just even when you're on stage yeah on stage or uh you just talk to the back of the room yeah like I don't even look at a person to start with normally Mm. it's like back of the room or I'm reading my notes and then I look in and you're trying to like pick out okay that person's engaged I'm gonna talk to that person all right click across and then you start picking up people's eyeballs and stuff but at the start it's just like all right center yourself what does the room sound like how do I sound do I like how I sound um Mm what what's the response like what's this crowd like because then that gauges your humor 
Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, these guys are a bit cheeky, so I can go yeah. with this. Like Masters Games, um, Pan Pacific Masters Games, I do every <laughs> second year. That is yeah. the most fun I ever have each. Oh, because they're yeah. all the oldies, they're all politically mm-hmm. incorrect. They're not they're taking been, themselves too seriously. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're dancing, serious about been things. been on the stores. Uh, it's yeah. like schoolies for over 50s. <laughs> Um, I think there's more condoms sold on the Gold Coast there than really? schoolies when the Masters Games is in town, like they're naughty. Uh, so you always see the old wow. guy in his 70s who's chatting up all the young birds in their 30s and you just call him out on oh, it no. on stage. You go, oh, mate, like you're <laughs> taking your time there, aren't you? But it's just good fun. And then yeah. you do multiple events. So you get to know all the athletes and all the people over mm. four days. So you get yeah. to know where they're from what's their background, like they're competing in multiple sports. And, mm. um, yeah, that, that that's fun. So multi-day events are always really cool because you get to know the crowd and by yeah. the end they're all friends. And so yeah. like, that was funny. Like I loved how you said that or whatever. Yeah. Oh. And then you, you see them elsewhere, like at Sydney Marathon, one of my highlights was there was an 81-year-old lady, her name was Nancy, crossed the line. Oh. And she did the Masters Games last year and she did the Beach Mile which was our first event. And she goes, Joel, I don't think I'll make the 15 minute cutoff. And she ended up, she was finished in like 10 minutes and she mm. was nowhere near last. Wow. So she was actually quite good. And so I got to see her. And then this year she's finished the marathon. So she's probably 82 now. Oh God. <laughs> she's like, I go, Nancy, can you tell me what was it that made you do this? And she goes, Oh, I was talking other people into doing it. Cause we want to make this one of the majors. So <laughs> I thought, Oh, I should do it too. So she was out there. It was, a heat wave. Oh my god! Thirty-two degrees. People were Gross. going down left, right, and center, and she's just finished the marathon. And it's like, wow, that's what a rock star. That's inspiring. And she was, she didn't like any fuss. She was like, yeah, whatever. Mm. Walked off. <laughs> um, whereas some of the others will love that attention, and they want, yeah. like, you'll go, oh, 82, 85, or seventy-five plus category, and they go, I'm eighty-two, and they want everyone to know how old they are yeah because it Others is a, like it yeah. is an achievement Master. too like yeah it's like yeah of course like see it see it from the rooftops like yeah <laughs> geez i've i will never do a marathon but you i never say so you yeah well <laughs> yeah. i met a there's another man at the masters games they were in their 70s and they were battling it out and they had the carbon mm. shoes on and everything and this guy had to go back to South Australia. So the other guy that was remaining, he goes, oh, thank God. Now I'm going to win something. Like, <laughs> I can't beat him. And, he, how, and this gentleman, he's 76 years of age. He started marathon running at 72 and he now holds wow. the world record for the fastest 75-year-old man doing the marathon in the world. So what? it's like, far out. Like, that's inspiring. So you're never mm. too old to start. Oh and yeah, it's just you a know, right now thing. you probably got better knees than some of us. So yeah, um, yeah, it's just more of a desire thing. I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> because a marathon's not fast; it's mm. it's all talking. Yeah, yeah, you want your heart rate to be aerobic so you can eat yeah. and drink. It's just an eating, drinking, walking, jogging. That's best. it, and I think I struggle with that because I'm just like, no, let's just like let's focus on something like you know I played netball growing up so yeah. it's like oh yeah let's focus on like the balls up here I'm gonna run up here like you know yeah. it was always like something to do and like a direction to change and that kind of you know netball is not necessarily quick as such but it is in acceleration it, yeah. It's, yeah it's like oh okay we're gonna go over here and oh now what are we doing like it's constantly different things to think about whereas Hmm. <laughs> yeah like, I, I relate to that because I like my my addiction to exercise is through the endorphins that you get mm. and that's from doing a 5k park run or yeah your interval session on the bike or swimming or running where you go you finish it and it really hurts while you're doing it but you finish yeah. it and go, wow that was awesome mm. and you're buzzing for the next hour um and yeah presenting gives you that buzz that's it's, it's so addictive. good yeah and it is it is fun um, so, oh, so to wrap up then, oh, because there's so much we could talk about about this, uh, I'm sure. Yeah. But... <laughs> As I said to you, my shortest, my shortest podcast before this one was an hour and a half. <laughs> well, we're going to yeah. get there, I promise. <laughs> um, so to wrap up, to to give anyone advice, whether like what whether they want to be an MC or something, just want more confidence in being able to speak and engage with people because that's something that I notice that you are very good at because you do it intentionally what 
is the advice that, I mean, there's so much advice we've already given, but what is the advice, the number one thing that you would say to them to help them build that confidence? Yeah. So number one thing I think is um, put yourself in situations where you get to actually speak on a microphone or Mm. you get to speak to an audience. So like one of those things when I was a primary school teacher is that the PE teacher, I used to get up out in every assembly and talk about sport. And that was for me to get practice on the microphone. And that's how I got heard by uh, Ironman delegate to sort of start what I was doing as well. So, um, and plus they'd been at the training session. So they heard me public speak. I knew I loved the sport Mm. and sort of pulled me in. Um, That would be number one. Number two would be they're not judging you. They're judging your voices. And always have when things are not going to go right. Mm. So don't have it scripted. Yeah have dot points what are the key messages you want to give someone and then if things don't work like I I I had this part where I was interviewing the young boy in Tasmania who um sewed teddy bears together for people in hospital for kids in need and I was interviewing him I said so how do we support you uh, to help others and he goes just be be kind (laughs) I was speechless so yeah. that would have been 30 <laughs> seconds of dead silence because I lost all train of thought. I was so moved by the moment. Yeah. But it's okay to let it breathe. And then you can it's name okay that. to have that moment. Yeah. And it actually made it more special that I got then, I was introducing the CEO of the Commonwealth Games onto stage and I got his whole title wrong and I copped it from my boss, but still it showed everyone in the audience that was there how rattled I was by this gesture by this young man yeah. who was only probably 15 years of age. Oh, then. Wow. And I was like, far out. That's just, and that's a memory I'll never forget. So it's okay to have that, but it's, it's also okay to say it's okay. It's not live. We'll, we'll edit that out later. Like it's <laughs> just have your quick little throwaway lines like that. Yeah. And people will chuckle and they'll forget that you made a mistake. Exactly. A because little bit of self-deprecation. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit of like the playful, like, um, for me, it's like if I'll say something and and no one's ready to respond yet, which happens, and it's like yeah. okay, I'm like oh maybe it's just me then okay, like you know like just little comments that help. Yeah, like I ask the crowd here, and they're all filming, so mm. no one's cheering, and you go oh, and the crowd goes wild, and they yeah. then they will cheer. And it's like yeah. oh, hey, this is silly because we're all mm. filming. We've got this athlete doing this amazing thing in front of us, and no one's giving yeah. them for like come on guys mm. let's give them some energy and that'll make them go better so yeah um, and it's not about me it's about the athlete is Definitely. always that but um yeah always think about and then why are you talking it's mm. you normally if you are ever public speaking you're representing a business a charity or an idea or something so what are you representing so how can you showcase that the best yeah. And how can you present it and engage people? So always make it relatable. Don't always go for big words. Go for, all right, here's your stats. Like people will just rabbit on about data. I went to my, my kid's um, graduation and the principal rabbit on about data oh, for God. 30 minutes. And I was like, mate, that's all well and good. But what does that mean? Like mm. absolute nothing. Like your KPIs mean nothing to the crowd. What means more to us is, all right, if Johnny goes to this school, what are the traits that he's going to walk away with? Yeah, and what's the experience? Like, they're going to be of... positive and they're going to be like well-mannered and they're going to learn this. That's what I care about as a parent. So yeah. re- knowing your audience, knowing what your key messages are and how you can make it relatable and you'll always engage people then. Um, mm-hmm. And not being mon- monotone. Like that's, yeah. And I like, find like it helps to start, like if you can start talking about something that you enjoy that lights you up that you're like oh I just I really get into this and and that's a good practice way even if it's at home like to just doing reels yeah doing doing reels is really yeah the kids are so good at public speaking these days because they're all doing tiktoks and Mm. doing it that's to an audience and to me that's more scary because I can't see the audience yeah like or radio like, would be the worst because you crack a joke but did anyone laugh yeah whereas like, i'm mm-hmm. live on site a thousand people will have a mm-hmm. chuckle it's like okay yes i'm nailing this this is good and when you're not in the zone you know you're not in the zone and you gotta yeah. and you get can into adjust. it yeah yeah so wow. um yeah always working into it so yeah i think that's pretty much yeah, yeah. most of them and um even 
like learning how to hold a microphone is is one like not trying to choke the mic <laughs> yeah. the amount of people that i had say joel you're choking the mic so when I, what i mean from that is the microphone has the, the black bit at the top mm, so that's yeah. where the little condenser is so if you you hold that the condenser can't vibrate yeah and your voice will sound muffled and it'll sound deep but it won't give all the afflictions mm. so guys do that when they want to make it loud uh oh. in the mic but if you hold the mic down a little bit lower and then work the mic so if it is going yeah. south, you just bring it out and if it's like not loud enough you just bring it in just rest yeah. it if, if you need to i found like that with the grip i've had i've presented where like where i'm holding the mic the whole time and it's always in one hand like i yep. rarely i rarely oh, i don't think i switch it often but it's always in one hand and well this particular time was at least and when i finished it was like 45 minutes later and when i finished and i gave the mic to the person and i'm like oh <laughs> like you like, grip it? <laughs> yeah I was gripping it like it was just like it wasn't too painful but it was it was noticeable noticeable yeah. enough to be like oh I was really and then it shifted because I became aware of that and like I yeah. think I relaxed more and like it wasn't that that was wasn't a relaxing particular presentation it just I was just in that mode where I was too focused maybe <laughs> but and then like and then I will change it over because then it sort of you know gives my hands that awareness of because the other risk for me is relaxing too much in my hands and then I just drop it because I'm not thinking about it like it'll just slip because it's like you know not holding it enough yep. it is just this awareness of being in my body enough to be like yeah if I'm engaging then I'll let it swap over because then I'm freshly aware of the mic in that hand and then the other way around and yeah you know, like it's just little things for me that I've noticed just from the moment of going oh yeah but if I'm engaging and swapping it over every now and then not not constantly then i'm like my hand the skin on my hand is freshly aware of holding something yeah and there's also probably the last one for real beginner beginners would be mm. if you don't have to be up there by yourself how can you do it in an interview mm. two people mm -hmm. bouncing off each other and being a conversation yeah is more engaging to listen to than one oh, yeah. person struggling through a script yeah, this is how this podcast started. I started yeah. it in 2020 and it was purely just interviews. Now it's a it's a blend, but it's purely just interviews when it started for like a, a year, I think, at least, maybe more. But um, yeah, that's how it started. And, and that allowed me to just, I mean, I enjoyed it anyway by then, but that still allowed me to just get comfortable, even more comfortable being in these conversations. And yeah. I still think my best podcast episodes are the ones that are interviews. Yes. Like, yeah, I just, there's a lot more to it where it's like, yeah, cool. Let's talk about these things. So it's, yeah, there's a lot more to work with. So yeah. no, these are such great tips, but also just such a lot of what you shared, I didn't know already, just for anyone listening. I didn't know a lot of this already to begin with. So it was very interesting to hear and to hear more of um, of your experiences in that, yeah. which is why it's I wanted a, you to come not on just, as well. Yeah, not just talking. Um, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. People think, oh, yeah, I can talk on the mic. And mm. I have a lot of people who go, can I talk on the mic? And I used to go, oh, yeah, because you're a novice. And you go, oh, okay. And yeah. they scream into the mic and it sounds mm -hmm. terrible and distorts. And you go, oh, I'll take that back. Yeah. Um, but that's when people want to be about them and it's an attention-seeking thing. It's, it's I don't think public speaking is a, a thing to be making mm. popular. Like that's yeah. probably the wrong way. Like if you have been on reality TV and you're trying to increase your brand, yes, that's mm. the trajectory you're on and that's it. But for anyone who's like me that would just love to be part of events and be part of people's memories and people don't yeah. know who I am. Like I was at the event on the weekend, like, oh, so what have you done? Um, you were really good on the mic today. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've done a few <laughs> events. I find that really embarrassing. I hate telling them, oh, yeah, like, you know, the voice you hear at the Gold Coast Marathon at the start and the voice at the finish that's me like mm. that's for the last six years that's that's been me and yeah I've done this and this and this and then you start listing it sounds a bit a bit knobby but they, <laughs> no like, like don't belittle but, yourself that but way I like, oh, I like being not, yeah 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 like oh I, and then I go oh yeah I do remember that voice now mm. so it's I like when people know they hear my voice and they know it's going to be a good event yeah it's yeah. going to be quality or you're going to be looked after 
Um, mm. I don't work on any events where uh, athletes are at risk or mm. I don't see safe practices. So I, if I experience that, I give feedback and I experience that again, I will move away from that You're event. Done. Yep. Nice. Uh, I, I just don't do it. Um, I'm really fortunate that I work 30 events a year and now I choose. Well, yeah. Yes, I no like that. Both. That's a good say. To I say no to more than I say yes to now. That's awesome. Days. Yeah. Well, where Very can lucky. people where can people um uh follow you or find out where your next event is, where they can hear your voice? Just yeah, what's next? Yeah, yeah. So um probably the gram, Instagram's probably mm. the easiest, and at multisport underscore MC is my handle. So you can track me there. But um yeah, you'll see me on lots of marathons around Queensland and Sydney next year. So I think I'm on the Brisbane Marathon, Sunny Coast, Yapoon, mm. there's Cairns, wow. uh, Gold Coast, and then Sydney. So those marathons, and then I'm on the Jetty the Jetties and the Run Armies and, and all of that. So, yeah, yeah, I think I'm locked in for 25 events already next year. Amazing. Yeah, from the kids' events at schools, Met North, state championships, right through to the big ones like Sydney. So um, I, I look at events as an ecosystem. So yeah. there's... The, the yeah, small events have have a have a place to to bring people in and introduce mm. them. To what's in there? The small on scale, but you need those, and then you move to the big ones. So everything's rehearsing for the big one for me. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, I did that really well, but I didn't like how I did that, so I'm going to practice that for the next twelve months mm. at all of these events that I'm working out to try and see if I can do better at that particular thing. So, um, and I think that's the biggest thing: self awareness, reading yeah. the room. Do you understand? Uh, I have worked with MCs that do not read the room and they get upset when they don't get rebooked and <laughs> because they don't listen to the feedback from people. You're not reading mm. the crowd. The crowd will come, see their loved one finish, and then they leave. Yeah. Stay there and you want the crowd to build and hold them for as long as possible by entertaining them. So it's it's not about yelling the loudest. It's not about, yeah, any of that because that's repetitive and boring. It's mm-hmm. about entertaining and um yeah, I sort of see myself as a bit of an event carny these days, sort of yeah. traveling, traveling the country. That's a great way to, <laughs> yeah, that's as a great carny. description. And people are like, we're not carnies. And I was like, oh, well, why don't I? But are we? Yeah, got my thick <laughs> tooth. Yeah. I go around a live events. I'm not mm. a TV personality or anything, but so it's what You're we do. You're a roadie. You could be a roadie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I even take my own speakers with me some places oh, just in case. Wow. <laughs> like yeah. it's all carny. Yeah. <laughs> You're in it. Well, thank yeah. you so much for your time. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out to to have a chat and to share yeah. with us your story and your experiences. And there's so much in there that we can all learn from, even if we're not in that real public speaking space. But, you know, we all need to speak to people at some point yeah. in our lives. So there's so much we can um, we can take from what you've shared. So I really appreciate um yeah everything and i'll share your links um in the caption and show notes so people can follow you and learn more yeah awesome thanks jess thank you